Okay, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, so it's Palm Sunday and uh, uh, let's worship God together. Yes. yes. You can dance if you want. Thank <laughs> you. 
continue to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had be heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone out after him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Princess. Okay. Well, there's a testimony time later on, but I shall share my testimony first to start with. Today, the MRT went down, and I took two hours just to get here. Yeah, I was quite, it was quite significant. Uh, yeah, and uh, the, I, I tried to get a grab, no grab. I tried to get a cab, no cab. I uh, was thinking, well, thank God I left um, like two, three hours earlier than. If not, maybe Roman Yen will just have to do a last uh, sermon for today. <laughs> but let's just uh, pray and uh, commit this time to God. Father, I just want to thank you for today. But even as we celebrate uh, Palm Sunday, even as we enter into Holy Week, Lord, we should just prepare our hearts. We should just prepare our hearts to receive what you, what you have for us. We should prepare our hearts to uh, enter this holy week and understand your love for us. Lord. So, Father, we pray today, even as we um, reflect on your word, that Lord, you will speak to us, Lord, that you will convict us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let me begin with a question. Okay, what will you do? What will you do if you hear that a royalty is coming to visit you? Okay, off the mask. God. Okay, what will you do if you hear that a royalty is coming to visit you? Say, for example, Queen Elizabeth II. Okay, if she is making a visit to Singapore and COR, what would you do to welcome her? Okay, welcoming such a big shot like her would definitely require a lot of preparations. Okay, you need to make sure that the place is clean and tidy. You need to make sure that you know maybe the buildings and rooms need some kind of makeover so that it will look more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, you probably need to be brief on how to host the queen. Anyway, I was just doing some research and here are some uh, some points that I discovered: the do's and don'ts for meeting the royalty. First, you need to the do's. You need to do a courtesy or bow when you meet the queen. You need to use the right greetings. The correct way to address the queen is your majesty. What about the don'ts? You are not supposed to touch her. Only shake the hands when she offers. Don't expect the queen to start a conversation with you, especially if you are sitting on her lap during a meal. It is customary for the guest of honor to sit on her right. Um, and the convention is that she speaks to the person on the right first during the first course, first course of the dinner and then switches to the person on the left for the following course. So Formula One star Louis Hamilton who, who sat beside her on the left at one function didn't know this. He, he tried speaking to Her Majesty and was politely told, no, you speak that way first and I will speak this way and then I'll come back to you. Okay, and then third, don't leave before the queen. The guests should never leave an event before the queen unless permission has been granted through a private secretary. Wow. But that's the, there was a similar welcome party that happened 2,000 years ago. But there was no curtsy, there was no food, but we have a large crowd waving palm branches, singing songs to welcome Jesus. So who are all these people that formed the crowd? Okay, some of them had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. It is one of the three major festivals that are celebrated in the Jewish calendar. And the rest were those who had heard about Lazarus being resurrected just a few days ago. And they had come to check out who this Jesus is. Now we can tell how excited the crowd is. They were waving palm branches. They were singing, perhaps dancing, or even shouting. And in the other Gospels, 
they laid palm branches on the ground to form a carpet for Jesus to come in. In our current context, it's like Taylor Swift and a red carpet event before Grammys, or even BTS making their grand arrival before the MTV Awards. So it's like people who are welcoming Jesus, this VIP, into Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But what's with these palm branches and Hosanna? Was that a norm in the Jewish um, um, celebration? Okay, let's talk about palm branches. Why wave palm branches when they were welcoming Jesus? Why not flowers? Flowers more pretty, right? Like, why not hold up banners like we would when we go and for concerts and when we meet the, the K-pop stars or Hollywood stars? Why palm branches? Now, in Jesus' days, palm branches meant a few things. Okay, religiously, palm branches symbolize victory, resurrection, and authority. They were waved at Jewish festivals, example, Feast of Tabernacles, and they, they were meant to declare a future victory God will bring to his people. Historically, the image of palm trees were found in Jewish coins. Politically, palm branches were used to welcome this national hero, Simon Maccabeus. 200 years earlier, when he defeated the foreign armies, people shouted, cheers, and waved palm branches to celebrate the deliverance. So if you put all of this together, palm branches were waved to welcome a national, a royal, a king. And this national hero and king was none other than Jesus on Palm Sunday. And in line with all this, Revelation 7 also paints a future scene of a great multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the Lamb, which is Jesus, with palm branches in their hands. Okay, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 11 says, After this, I look, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes, people, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. We sang, a, we sang endless hallelujah just now, and that was a glimpse of what uh, we see in the Revelation. So the next notion of people waving palm branches wasn't, wasn't just an act of cultural norms, but their act of welcome and paying tribute to a person who they recognize as king. Okay, they were paying tribute, and they were welcoming this king that's uh, coming into Jerusalem. And to add on to the celebration, the people were saying Hosannas. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Now, just now, Joel was reading the song Hosanna. Anybody want to, anybody know the meaning of Hosanna? I want to make a smart guess. God, okay. Any other answers? Joel, maybe you know the answer, right? Song. <laughs> okay, the meaning, okay, there's a hint, okay, I'll give you a hint. The meaning is found in the song, in the chorus. Okay, Hosanna, son, or address to God, please, God, save us. Okay, just how we said, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Okay, so Hosanna means God, save us. Okay, and this whole scene is a re reenactment or a reunion of uh, Psalms 118, which is also our call to worship for today. Okay, so everything is linked today. Okay, Psalms 118 
uh, verse 25 and to verse 27 says, Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. And the Lord is God, and he has made his light, light shine upon us. So we tie everything, really everything up. The people were welcoming Jesus, but they were also expressing their hope that Jesus would be the king who will save Israel. That's why they were singing Hosanna, God save us. Jesus is the light that will shine in this current place of darkness. So you see, the Jews had been under the Roman rule. They were living amongst people with a different culture. They had to pay a lot of taxes to the Roman government. And in a way, they were oppressed and they were living in darkness. And they were hoping, they were hoping that Jesus would be the promised Messiah to save and free them from the Roman rule. They wanted Jesus to overthrow the Roman government and to establish a new kingdom. Unfortunately, that wasn't really God's plan at all. So while Jesus has indeed come as a king, he was a different kind of king. A king that defies human expectations. Jesus is a different kind of king that defies human expectations. And to drive home the message, this king chose to ride on a donkey to make his grand entrance, a low and humble donkey. Now, if you think about it, if there is an animal who would carry a king, you will be thinking that it, it will be an animal that will defeat the status, the prestige, the authority of a king. You will probably be thinking of a strong wall horse, maybe like the one in the picture. The height, you know, like strong and handsome horse. <laughs> okay, but you just came a donkey, donkey. Yeah. So that is like, that is like, to me, that's like, like me, Taylor Swift or BTS coming on the red carpet event with a Honda Jazz. Not very, um, not very um, stunning or not very um, appealing in sense. Yeah, but interestingly, Zechariah wrote about the promised king riding on a donkey. Zechariah 9 verse 10 says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble. Riding on a donkey, riding on the donkey's cart. So Jesus' grand entry into Jerusalem with a donkey wasn't a mistake at all. It was to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy of him as Messiah. By choosing the donkey, Jesus sent across a very important message. Yes, I am the king of Israel, but not the king you expect me to be. Yes, I am the Messiah, not by throwing the Roman government, but by suffering and dying on the cross. Jesus is the king that defies human expectations. We know the story that follows after Palm Sunday. The crowd that sent Hosannas to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem became the ones that shouted, crucify him, in rejection of him. All because Jesus didn't become the king they wanted him to be. And if we are honest with ourselves, it is not difficult to notice the rejection that is happening around everywhere. Like how Jesus was rejected because he defied human expectation, people are rejected because they are different from what others expect them to be. We read about racism happening in US, Europe, and other parts of the world. We also see the cancer culture becoming more prevalent in our society today. There was this news article about cancer culture and it says this. Activism on Twitter is easy. 
it takes a couple of seconds to attack someone or to circulate a petition to have the person fired or ostracized. And I'm not sure whether you, you, are, you, you read about this. There was a recent article that was shared on Purse by a female pastor. And she made a call to Christian female to help our brothers by not dressing in a very revealing and provocative way. I understand that that may not be the wisest thing to say or, or perhaps it could be better phrased, especially on the online platform. But the amount of harsh and negative uh, comments that came after that was quite shocking. Was there a need to cancel her or crucify her for something that she said? What are some other cases of rejection that you've observed around you? In your schools, your army camps, or your workplaces? How do we respond to such cases of rejection? Do we also reject them like the rest? Like how the crowd reject Jesus? Because they are simply not what we expect them to be. Because they are different from us. Because they are not like us. How do we treat those who are bullied or ostracized in our classes, in our army camps? Do we avoid them like how the rest would? Do we laugh at them or do nasty things to them? Can we speak up for them when they are bullied? Can we show some acts of love and kindness to them? Matthew 25, verse 35, to 40 says, you know, Jesus says this, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will ask, answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty or give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it for me. How can we be different from the crowd that crucified Jesus? How can we welcome Jesus. In closing, I'm going to ask Mentor to read for us a poem written by Malcolm Guild. Mm. Just as Christ journeys into Jerusalem and beyond, this poem talks about us journeying into our hearts and inner lives. Imagine, imagine our, our inner lives and our hearts as Jerusalem. There are places of worship temples. Places of corruption and sin, gardens of rest. And as Christ journeyed into Jerusalem, we also take a journey into our hearts and reflect on our lives. Let Christ walk this journey with you as you reflect and listen to Samantha reading this point. Palm Sunday by Malcolm Gill. Now to the gate of my Jerusalem, the seething holy city of my heart, the Savior come, but will I welcome him? O oh, crowds of easy feelings make a start. They raise their hands, get caught up in the singing, and think of the battle won. Too soon they'll find the challenge, the reversal he is bringing changes their tune. I know what lies behind the surface flourish that so quickly fades. Self-interest and fearful guardedness, the hardness of the heart, its barricades. And at the core, the dreadful emptiness of a perverted temple, Jesus come. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, you alone know the state of our willful wandering hearts, Lord. Hearts that are so willing to accept one day, yet turn away the next. Uh, and yet you are willing to walk to the cross for us. Help us to welcome you into our lives each day, to worship you and to acknowledge you as Father, as Lord, and as Savior. Um, help us to remember that what we learn about now is not just a fable, not just a tale, but really an important part of history, Lord. Is that name of precious name. Amen. Sorry, change my yeah, good job. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Welcome to Master Seed Service once again. Here are the announcements for today. So next, this is the schedule for Holy Week this coming this week. Please remember to register for the services uh, so that you can attend it in real life. Otherwise, live stream services are there. I think it's here. And next up, this is our service schedule for April and then it's for um, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. So yep, this is what you can look forward to in the next month. Uh, we'll now take out our tithes and offerings. Do encourage everyone to give with a joyful heart as we acknowledge that everything we have comes from God. So you can scan the QR code or you can donate physically in the boxes located near the exit later. Okay, uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us in all aspects of our lives. As you give back a portion to your kingdom, I just pray for wisdom to use this money to build your kingdom, to share your word, and really to reach out to uh, our brothers and sisters. Lord. This I pray God's precious name. Amen. Okay, so now we'll go into a time of testimony. Uh, as mentioned before, if you wish to share your testimony, please raise your hand and the welcome team will bring a mic to you. Oh, Sam, oh. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Sam from Ulam. And some of y'all might know Jit. Those who don't know Jit, he is this fellow who happens to be a boyfriend. <laughs> uh, I want to thank God because last week he got baptized. <laughs> Four or five years ago, that was before we started dating. Right? And then uh, he accepted Christ then, but then he wasn't able to get baptized because of family objections and whatnot. So, really praise God for answer prayers that he got baptized last week. And he also brought his pre deliver. So, that is really quite big for all of us, and really praise God. Hello, uh, Isaac from the Kapano, my son's brother. Uh, I think we saved from my former grade, you know, I just finished it up with like this big competition. And yeah, I'd like to thank God for community day. And also, we, we recently had some weird integration thing here, uh, which where there was a lot of illegal stuff going on there. So I'm glad that, uh, that yeah, I'm glad that uh, thank God, thank God kept me uh, safe. And, and I bought the majority of the illegal things. So that's good. Any other ones? Any other ones? Okay, we have a lot of fun turning around. Yeah, guys, so I think I uh, unfortunately I'm not related to either Sam or Jack. 
Yeah, so uh, today I just want to give thanks to God because uh, okay, I guess just like a minor update is that like uh, like you know when I started uni, then I saw some people like on Instagram they're like, oh entrepreneur this, entrepreneur that. So I was like, oh this sounds kind of cool. And then um, like I took the English for that, and I and I did pay. I did ask. Them. So I just want to thank God because recently I got an opportunity like to kind of like fulfill some part of that. So basically, um, in May. I'm going back to Malaysia to take a gap year to like work on this uh, startup project. So like I'm super thankful for God for this opportunity because it just came like that. And I didn't like work super hard and you know it's like really just thought it was so good to give it to me. Yeah. And I think I just want to thank God because the, the ride has been good so far. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, you won't see me so soon. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really there, so. Uh, hold on. Uh, I want to thank God for summer intern uh, opportunity. I think I tried quite hard for like, the first three months of this year, and I was quite dejected because I wasn't getting any uh, replies. Lah. So then, and I mean, I'm year one or so, lah, so I see then it's not really, like, it's really hard for you to get it. So I'm quite thankful that uh, when I prayed on March 3rd, I am stressed on March 3rd, I couldn't get it. Then on March 4th, I got a call for an offer immediately. So I really thank God that his timing was like, quite good. Lah, yeah. so thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> Not, I can share. Hi, I'm Debbie Ong. Hello, Hello. Uh, Yeah, so I just ended my finals around two weeks ago. It was one month long and it was, it was one of the shittiest month of my life. It was, wow. Okay, so we have like speaking finals and I really hate public speaking. Like, even this scares, scares me so much. Yeah, so like, before every exam, then I'm so nervous, I'm performing. Then I see my friend like sitting opposite me and she also wants to cry. Like really almost crying, she was like two seconds away from crying. Yeah, uh, but just very thankful uh, that I uh, managed to get through it. Uh, because of COVID, usually we do our exams by names. So like the A's will go to A's, B's will go to B's, some of the N's, uh, wherever they are. But uh, because of COVID, I managed to do it with my friends instead. Uh, so I was very, yeah, I was very thankful uh, to have people to pray with. Then even like the non-Christian friends will come and pray with us. Then they say, okay, prayer time. Then, okay, prayer time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, there were also a lot of examiners that like, I could recognize. And I think they recognized me as well. So I guess they were kind of, yeah, gave a bit more smile. And also for very nice uh, people who came for our exams. Now. Yeah, then during, because during our exams, like anything can come out. Read, anything can come out. Sometimes you read the senior accounts. So it's like our TYS stuff. Then you see like, wow, this weird thing that nobody has ever heard of came out. Yeah, but then I got very standard cases, I think. Yeah, so really quite thankful for that. Then like, so, so what we do is a circular. So like there are five stations, then you just go in one circle. Yeah, but then uh, halfway through, then suddenly I felt like, oh, wow, these cases are so good. God is really with me. Then I felt super calm. And yeah, so just very thankful for that. Yeah. Anybody else? Expectant looks. No. 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 Oh. <laughs> Is there a time? A lot of muscle, they want to see interesting. Oh, it's all Wanda, 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 Hi, my name is Wanda. I'm from Kaya. Uh, I just want to thank you for my mom. Uh, I had dinner with her on Friday, and we just kind of like caught up. I think we've been like so busy with work. 
and she quit her job. And now she's very free. So I decided to ask her for dinner. It was quite fun. And we thank God for my mom. Thank you, my mom. <laughs> Yes, inside. Hope we will still got muscle then. Alright. <laughs> wow, nice, Shami. Oh, <laughs> I'm learning from you very big today. Yes, uh, no. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks everyone for sharing your testimonies. I want to encourage all of us to continue to give thanks to God, especially during our cell groups. You may feel shy to share in front of everyone, but in your cell groups, please feel free to shy about what. Uh, please feel free to shy. Please feel free to share with, uh, yeah, with each other, and it really is very encouraging. Actually, uh, right now, we, uh, we are talking about praying uh, together, especially during times where we need God's uh, help. And at this time, we want to pray for some people as well. So I want to invite uh, Benji and Chloe Fang. If you are here, can you stand? Benji and Chloe. Okay. Benji, are you around? Okay, please stand, yeah. Okay, nothing significant, huh? All right, uh, for Benji, uh, he is going to uh, be enlisted on the 5th of April. So this is, uh, yeah, this is the last chance we have before we can pray for him. Okay. And so Chloe, uh, she is going to, uh, no, no, she will not be enlisted. <laughs> Okay, but she, she will be going to the UK uh, on the 15th of April. 14th of April. Okay, I just heard from your mom today. It's the 15th of April. She has changed her date. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, she will. Yeah, so Chloe will be going to the UK to. Uh, further studies for uh, the foreseeable future, right? So we want to pray for them. So um, can I invite uh, us just to stretch our hands as we pray for them? Lord, we want to thank you for Benji as he goes into NS in this uh, coming two weeks. It will be a new season in his life. So Lord, we pray that you will be with him, help him to grow in his trust in you and also to experience you even in the camp. Help him to uh, be the light shining for you in the camp. Someone who shares your good news with those around him. Someone who exemplifies acceptance, uh, not rejection. Someone who uh, is not afraid to stand up for you even in the camp. So we pray that you'll be with him, strengthen him and let this be a very uh, encouraging and uplifting journey for him when he's going through even difficult times. Let him remember that you are the one who gives him strength. And Lord, we also want to pray for Chloe as well. As she goes to the UK, we pray for your protection upon her. Keep her safe from the COVID virus and help her to also be able to focus on her studies and do well in them. And then Lord, 
whatever future that you have in store planned for her, it is such a wonderful future. Help her to continue to trust in you for her future and always give thanks and give glory to you in whatever she does. So we commit Benji and we commit Chloe to your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, please be seated. Well, we've come to the end of our service for this uh, afternoon. But this afternoon is actually the start of Holy Week, which is the most significant week of the whole journey of Lent. You know, as, as your pastor, I just want to say that I'm so proud and so happy with so many of you who are observing different uh, disciplines during Lent. So in this final week, let's not give up, but let's press in for this final week to really uh, observe them well and really glorify God. And let's also journey together as a church. You know, this coming week, every day is significant. And I'm going to send out devotions to, you know, to, to, this, to your cell leaders. And I encourage the cell leaders to also send out to everyone on the significance of every single day. What is Holy Monday? What is Holy Tuesday? What is Spy Wednesday? What is Monday Thursday? What is Good Friday? What is Holy Saturday? And finally, Easter Sunday, all about and together as a church, we can journey with Christ and really know what he goes through every single day and how significant it is. So can I invite all of us to stand as we receive God's blessings? The blessing of God for the sixth Sunday in Lent. Christ, the good shepherd, who has sacrificed his life for us, Draw us close to him so that we can find in him a sure foundation, a sure hope, and a sure source of help in all that we do. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Okay, let's go from here, declaring who God is.